And the material applied to this is completely procedural. And as you can see, it's fantastic for getting like this curvature definition. So there's a combination of pointiness and AO and some subtle details that are being generated there. That's realistically like this part of the material. Curtis, zoom into the nodes. No, you've got to buy me a coffee if you want that. So that section of it can be whatever you want. It could just be a regular principle BSDF. You could throw in any noise texture you want. It doesn't really matter. The point is that afterwards, we're then mixing it with subsurface and transmission. So you can notice here that we've got this color bleeding away from like the core of the object. And in a way, it looks kind of jade-like. In this case, on the object, I have my geometry node. It's named differently in this file because this was a test file. But in this case, the proximity is pointing towards a sphere object. So if I select that sphere, object and move this around you can see that where I move it the effect or that like the color the light bleeding through the object changes now that harsh line there is due to the fact that I'm imposing transmission and subsurf from the same object but we do also have control over the ramps so for example if I amped up the transmission you can let more light bleed through likewise with the subsurf as well so the whole thing becomes a bit more translucent what would be more appropriate is if I split these into two objects. So we go sphere, I'm going to name this one sub and sphere trans. So let's assign trans to the other one. Now I'm going to delete some of the extra geoprox, move this one a bit further away. Actually, this is wrong. That needs to be sphere trans. There we go. So now what's happening here is I've got one set of geometries defining where the object should be subsurf and one defining where it should be transmission. So at this point, if you're asking what's the point in doing this geometry wise, it's because the amount of information or the number of techniques that we'll be able to employ using this proximity data in geometry nodes is going to be a little bit insane, especially going forwards as geometry nodes progresses. Also, I wanted to use it for sculpt objects. So as I'm changing things procedurally, we're Working with UVs and texture-based objects is just not really applicable. More so than that, if you wanted to find complex shape gradients in the shader editor, that's going to be really ungainly, should we say. So having a geometry proximity would be great. Also, we could technically, or in theory, apply grease pencil curves, which would be much more easier to edit than convert to meshes procedurally than use those for geometry nodes.